Hey everyone, it's Sarah Jane with Chic on the Cheap, and today I have some brand new Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs to share with you to help you celebrate the season, but not break the bank. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this first DIY, you're going to need five of these metal wreath forms that are shaped like witch hats. These are out every fall at Dollar Tree, at least for the past few years, and you can use them to make an awesome piece of Christmas decor. All you need to do is zip tie the five hats together like this to form a star. You can use as many zip ties as you would like, but here's a closer look at how many I used. You just wanna make sure your star is nice and secure. Basically, you don't want it to move at all when you pick it up. Next, you want to grab some garland. This garland did come from Dollar Tree, but you can use tinsel or rope or even yarn and just start wrapping. And depending on whatever kind of material you're using, you may have to apply some hot glue, but I just tied the ends of the strands of the garland to the star, so I didn't have to use any kind of adhesive. Now, as you can imagine, this does take a little while to do, so put on a Christmas movie or some Christmas music. It really helps to pass the time. And this is just me giving the star a final inspection to make sure everything looks good and I did wrap the star in some lights and zip tied the battery pack to the back and I really love how this turned out. You can hang it up or prop it up against the wall. Now this next DIY is my most favorite of the video and it's a standing reindeer and you won't believe how simple it is to make. You just need to pick up a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree or you can even use some cardboard, but one sheet of foam board is all you need and then print out the free template. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. Now if you're super artistic, you can of course freehand this, but I recommend using the template. You just print it out on regular computer paper and there are nine sheets total. You'll first cut out all of the shapes and line them up and you'll notice you do have to overlap the paper a little bit to make the lines go together and then just tape the pieces together to connect them. And here's a look at the reindeer template. You'll have a body, two legs, an ear, and some antlers. Next, place your template on the foam board, and because I'm only using one board for this reindeer, I wanted to make sure I left some space to the right to trace two more legs, so that's why I positioned the pieces like this. And another thing I like to do is tape down the paper. It really makes the template a lot easier to trace because it doesn't move. And here's a look at the foam board after I traced out all of the pieces and you want to make sure to outline each front and hind leg twice to create four legs. Then using an X-Acto knife, I cut out all of the pieces and I wouldn't recommend using scissors for this. They usually don't give you the most precise cut when you're using foam board like a utility knife will. The antlers are the trickiest part. Take your time with those, but here's how that turned out. And here is the rest of the body. Next, grab some yarn. Dollar Tree does sell yarn, so does Walmart, and of course, craft stores, and you can pick out whatever color or type of yarn that you would like to use. There's so many types out there, so just have fun with it. This is a velvet yarn. I thought it was really pretty, and you'll just go to town wrapping all of the foam pieces. Now, the way I did this is I would apply some hot glue to the foam board and then wrap some yarn and then apply some hot glue and wrap some more. I think you get the picture, and I just continued this process until all of the pieces were cut. Covered. Next, it's time to glue the pieces together. I glued the ear first and then the legs. And the biggest tip I can give here is to just make sure the legs are all the same length. So wherever you are gluing them, just make sure the legs are all even. And I did use a lot of hot glue for this because I wanted it to be extra sturdy. And here's what the deer looks like without the antlers. And I'll show you what I did to the antlers. I covered them in tacky glue and then poured some of this really gorgeous glitter on top. I love some glitter for the holidays and I wanted the antlers to look really special and the glitter made them pop. Then to make the deer stand up, grab this Dollar Tree sign or a piece of wood. These are the signs you should be able to find this year for Christmas at Dollar Tree. And because there is a design on top, I gave it two coats of white chalk paint and let that dry. Once the paint was dry, I attached the legs of the reindeer to the sign, making sure to use a lot of hot glue. It should give you a strong hold, and this is why you want to make sure all of the legs of the reindeer are the same length. 
And here's how the reindeer looks completely assembled. But if you want to jazz him up a little bit, you can add some ribbon and a bell. That's what I'm going to do. And I just tied the ribbon around the reindeer's neck along with the bell. And I love the way this looks. But after making him, I decided to make another using some of this furry yarn. And this deer was absolutely stunning. But again, you can use whatever kind of yarn you would like. But I was just so impressed with the way that this furry yarn looks. To me, this definitely looks like something you might buy in a store. And I just can't believe I made this using Dollar Tree foam board and yarn. And here are the two reindeer together. And chances are once you make one, you'll want to make another like I did. And coming up in my next video, I'm going to show you another version of this deer. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, let me know which one you prefer, the velvet yarn reindeer or the furry one. So I think most people know that decorating with books is a big trend, but I'm telling you, go to your local thrift store and look for Christmas books. I found some amazing Christmas books at Goodwill over the weekend. These were all of the books that I got from one store. They were a dollar and 39 cents a piece, and they all had different Christmas themed titles. And while the covers on these were really pretty, if you remove the paper cover, the magic is underneath. And these books are so incredibly beautiful. They just look so high end. I love everything about them. And here are all of the books without their paper covers. And all you have to do is set them out on a coffee table or put them on an entryway table, really anywhere you want to. And they just look so nice. This is a classic Christmas look that you will use year after year. And yes, Dollar Tree does sell books. But when it comes to this idea, I think going to Goodwill or another thrift store will get you better results. And sometimes they will even have the Christmas books separated like my local store did. So it makes it really easy to find these. Every Christmas Dollar Tree has new Christmas mugs. And this one is my favorite for this year. And when I found it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I picked up three of Dollar Tree's tall glass candles and melted them in a stock pot on low heat. I do recommend doing this on low heat. It does take a long time, but it always gives me really great results. If your water starts to boil, it is way too hot. You can always reuse the wicks from your Dollar Tree candles, or you can buy new ones from your local craft store. And just hot glue the wick to the bottom and carefully place the melted wax into the mug and this mug held two melted candles. While the wax is cooling, I took a pack of Dollar Tree wax melts and melted some of the wax cubes in a pan. The wax should melt pretty fast. Now you can use a silicone mold for this next part, or I found these clay cutters from Hobby Lobby and I wasn't sure what size I wanted to use. So I'm just trying out the two largest sizes and I poured a little bit of the wax into each cutter and let that cool to build a base. Once the wax hardened, I poured the rest of the wax into the molds and let that sit for about 20 minutes. I decided I would use the largest mold and you can just break off the wax on the outside and push the shape through. This of course is a little gingerbread man. I think he is so cute and he came out so nice. And then you'll just need some icing bags. I picked up this pack from Dollar Tree and I put one of the bags inside of a coffee mug. And with the last remaining melted candle, I set it out and waited until the wax got a little cloudy at the bottom and poured it into the icing bag. And here's a closer look at that. And you just want to let that sit for a while until it starts to harden. Now, once you can tell that the wax is starting to harden, be sure to take the icing bag out of the mug and work with it a little bit. It should be warm to the touch and honestly, it should feel like icing. And then once the wax is ready to go, you want to snip off the end of your icing bag and pipe it on top of the candle. Now, I apologize about this. I try very hard to film my videos as best I can, but my arm got in the way, so my camera got out of focus. But all you have to do is just pipe on the wax like you would some icing. Next, I sprinkled on some cinnamon just to give this candle more of a realistic look. And then I'm going to add the little gingerbread man to the side so he looks like he's just sitting there in some whipped cream. And then this is a crayon that I drew stripes on with a chalk marker to look like a straw. And here is the finished candle. I think it looks so cute and this would make a fun gift idea or you could of course just use it inside your home as decor and making wax whipped cream or icing can be a really messy process. And I just tried to simplify everything and make it easier. So let me know if you try this out.
So as I was shopping for Christmas decor, I came across this Pottery Barn candy cane shaped pillow. I loved it, but it was $59.50. And you can honestly make something very similar using the Dollar Tree's candy cane wreath form and some chunky yarn. Now this yarn did come from Hobby Lobby. I always buy this on sale. Yarn was 30% off last week and I stocked up, but I'm going to show you two different versions of this DIY. And first you'll want to use some hot glue to attach the yarn to the form. You won't need to use hot glue the whole time just to get this started. And once you get the yarn attached to the form, you can start wrapping. And I just made sure to hold the two strands of yarn together and create a repeating pattern. And really you just keep wrapping again and again, no hot glue is needed for the body of the candy cane. And then when you reach the end of the form, you can trim the yarn down and hot glue it in place. So here's the first candy cane we made. There are lots of stripes and here's a look at the other. And with this one, I did five rows of white and then five rows of red and repeated that pattern. But I think both versions of the candy cane look really good and you'll just have to let me know which one you like the best. And the last thing that I did was bend both of the wreath forms to make them look more like the original Pottery Barn pillow. And then they are ready to add to your couch, just of course to use as a decorative pillow. You wouldn't wanna lay on this or anything like that, but it does look really amazing considering we used a Dollar Tree wreath form to create this. And I had a lot of yarn left over so I can make a bunch of these for friends and family or even give some as gifts. If you see these decorative ladders at Dollar Tree, pick up two of them. And what I'm going to do is first remove the decorative accent and be really careful when you do this because this ladder is very fragile. You know, it was only a dollar and 25 cents. So it's just not the highest quality, but I was very careful during this process, making sure to take everything off as gently as possible, but you should be left with two ladders that don't have any decorative accents on them. And then you can paint those ladders, whatever color you would like. Then once the paint is dry, you just connect the two ladders together like this. I use some hot glue and in a matter of minutes, you have created a cute Christmas ladder for your plush Santa, or you can pick up one of these elves from Dollar Tree and make it look like he or she is climbing up the ladder. This is my elf. His name is Buddy and he was helping me put the ornaments on my Christmas tree today and the ladder really helped him get his work done. <laughs> For this next idea, if you see these star wooden hooks in Dollar Tree, grab a pair of those. These are an awesome Dollar Tree find, but I'm going to show you how you can use them for Christmas. But before I do that, I did want to show you what I did with these laser cut wood words. You get two for $1.25 and they both say believe. And I just spray painted them red and here's how they looked once they dried. And here's how I'm using the star hooks and the wood words. The star hooks make a great stocking hanger if you don't have a fireplace, or maybe you don't want to hang your stockings by your fireplace. These hooks are a great alternative. And then all I did with the wood words was tie them around the hanger of the stocking using some twine. And I also added a bell and I think these look so awesome. These hooks look really high end. I don't think anyone would know you got any of this from Dollar Tree. Now, if you can't find those star hooks, maybe you can find these hooks. My local Dollar Trees have a bunch of these in stock right now and just pick out whatever kind of scrapbook paper you would like. You can even use gift wrap if you want to and trace the outline of the decorative part of the hook onto the paper and cut it out. This hook does have a decorative edge on it and I did try to remove that with a flathead screwdriver, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's way too hard. All you have to do is take a glue stick and apply a lot of glue to that accent and place the paper directly on top. No one will ever know that the decorative piece is underneath and I made two of these. And one quick tip with these, if you want to hang them on your wall and you don't want to use a nail or a screw, just take off the back hanger piece. It's really easy to do. And I'm putting some command strips on the back just so that there's no damage to my walls. I do live in an apartment, but you can always just put a screw or a nail on the wall and hang these up. But this is an alternative option. And here's how the stocking hangers turned out. Again, just make these however you want with whatever kind of paper you want. Just have fun with it. That's really the joy of crafting is making something your own. 
And here's another scrapbook paper DIY idea. I got this sheet from Joann's and these three candles are from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut out the different tags out of the paper. And then I'm going to peel off the labels on these candles. The labels did come off really easily. When you work with Dollar Tree candles, you never know if the label is going to come off easily like this or not. And then I'm going to take the paper tags and again, using a glue stick, apply them to the front of each candle. And here's what the candles look like after I applied the scrapbook paper to them and I added some red and white twine to the top to finish them off. And these candles look so good. They already have frosted glass, which makes them have a really pretty glow. And this is just a simple idea to help you decorate your home on the cheap. Or of course you can make these as gifts for friends and family. They literally take seconds to put together. All right, guys, well, that's it. Those are some brand new Christmas DIYs to get you started for the upcoming season. I hope you all enjoyed these. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comment section below. And I have a lot more Christmas DIYs coming. I can't wait for you to see them. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until my next one, I'll see you then.